The biggest thing talked about when it comes to the Bamboo Labs 3D printers is their speed. And for good reason, these printers are fast, really fast. But one thing I think is as impressive, if not more impressive, is their AMS, or Automatic Material Station. With this add-on, you can top load up to four spools of filament that will automatically unload after the print completes. You can then choose from the slicer which of those four filaments that you'd like to print the part that you're sending off to be printed in. On top of that, it can be used for the most hands-off, accurate, multicolor 3D printing that I've ever seen. The single AMS will allow you to print with up to four different spools, but thanks to the Bamboo AMS Hub, you can actually daisy chain up to four of these together, giving you the possibility of using up to 16 spools of filament, which is just absolutely insane. So in today's video, we will be diving into the AMS. We'll cover the hardware, we'll cover the slicer, we'll go through the process of setting up the AMS hub along with my second AMS system so that way we can run them together. And of course, we will do some printing along the way. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Currently the X1, X1 Carbon, and the brand new P1P are all compatible with the AMS system. All that's required for the AMS is the little filament buffer that will come with the purchase of your AMS, or you can buy them additionally for $24.99. The actual setup process just has you attach the buffer to your printer using two screws, then taking one of the included Bowden cables and having it go from that buffer to the printer, while the other one goes from the buffer to the AMS, and then plugging in two cables. The AMS does have two pockets, or slots on the back for desiccant and it does come with some form of desiccant in here however I would highly recommend you picking up some additional that are reusable if moisture is something that you're really worried about. Polymaker sent me over their Christmas bundle which contains three spools of Polylite PLA in red, green, and gold that have a bit of a sparkle to them that I'm going to be using. Just like all of Polymaker spools, they are still made of cardboard, but they do have a special limited edition Christmas print on the side and I will have this bundle linked down below in the description if that's something you're interested in finding out more about. From what I've seen online and my own personal experience, the AMS is pretty hit or miss when it comes to cardboard spools and Bamboo actually does not recommend that you use cardboard spools in their AMS. However, luckily there is some awesome person out there that designed these printable rims that you can install on the side of your spools, which has worked flawlessly for me. I print these out in ABS, which gives them a tight fit on the Polymaker spools and feed them into the AMS one by one. For anyone that has an AMS and is interested in these, I will have the link to the specific ones I use in the description down below. Each slot on the AMS has its own gear system and the process of loading is as simple as feeding one spool into its slot until the sensor is triggered, which grabs the spool and feeds it to the next sensor before it backs it out to sort of its starting point. You repeat this process for the remainder of the spools until they are all loaded. If you load a spool of Bamboo Labs official filament, there is an NFC tag on the inside that the AMS can read, which will automatically tell it and the slicer what type of filament it is, as well as the color that you are using. In our case, since we're using Polymaker filament, we need to click on the AMS tab of the printer screen, select each slot and enter the filament type along with the color. For most, you'll just be choosing generic and then the filament type you're using and then you'll choose the color, but Polymaker Polylite filament is actually in the Bamboo system, so you can choose Polymaker Polylite and then I just chose the appropriate color that matches with each of the spools. Jumping into Bamboo Studio, under the filament section is a sync material list from AMS button. Clicking on this will import all of your loaded filament colors and types from your machine directly into the Bamboo Studio slicer. I felt it was only appropriate to print something Christmassy since this is the Polymaker Christmas bundle and I found a Pretty awesome Santa Claus model over on Printables that I downloaded and imported into the slicer. This is a single color model, so clicking on it and clicking on the color painting option will allow us to paint the model. Depending on the complexity of the models, this can either be a really quick thing or a really long process. Simple models or models that just have more sort of hard defined geometries will be much quicker and you can use things like the paint bucket tool, but then you have other models like the Santa Claus model, which had me zooming and panning and painting a lot of it pretty manually to get the Santa Claus as close as I could to a place where I was happy with it. All in all, it took me about 20 minutes to fully paint this Santa Claus model. From here, you'll want to click on the flushing volumes button, also under filament to open the flushing volume window. In this window, you can see the volume that will need to be purged between each color change. 
Generally speaking, going from a darker color to a lighter color will require more of a purge versus going from a lighter color to a darker color will require less filament purged in between the transition. The default value for flush multiplier is 1.0, which in most cases is excessive. You can leave it as is if you want to be on the safe side, but most of the time now I'm going down to at least 0.8 without issue. Then select auto calculate to have the slicer adjust purge volumes based on the flush multiplier and selected colors before clicking OK to close out. In most instances, I recommend having a prime tower when you're doing multicolor 3D printing. The purging will make sure that you've transitioned between one color to the next, but the prime just ensures that the flow of the filament from the extruder through the nozzle is flowing correctly before it jumps over and starts printing your model. I've had no issues scaling the prime tower down about 10 millimeters or so, and depending on the model you're printing, if it's a fairly solid model with large blocks of color that you're doing perimeter from inside to outside, you might be able to get away with fully removing it, but so far I've just gone with shrinking it down little by little, depending on, again, the model that I'm printing. If you are running the smooth time lapse, is what it's called, it needs to have the prime tower enabled, so that way the head can go over to the prime tower before the software snaps a photo of it. If you're using the traditional time-lapse option, you don't have to have a prime tower enabled. Slicing up our Santa model, we can see the total time to print is roughly 18 and a half hours, with seven and a half hours of that being prepare time, which is primarily the filament swapping and purging. On top of that, we'll be using 340 grams of filament with roughly 212 of that 340 being waste filament from purging. However, if we add a second Santa, our print time only goes up by three hours and our waste material stays exactly the same. This is due to the color changes between those two models that are identical being the exact same. So if you have two of them or if you have 10 of them on your build plate, you're not purging any more material. So I strongly recommend if you are multicolor printing, if at all possible, to batch out prints as much as you can because you're going to save a ton of both time and material. With our two Santas sliced up, we are ready to send them off to be printed. When multicolor or multi-material printing with the AMS, you really shouldn't have to do much of anything unless there is a tangle in the spool or tolerances are way off. You should be able to really just sit back and watch the print as it comes to life. One warning I have though is that the waste shoot or the poop shoot as many have called it with the Bamboo Labs, it purges in between each color change and that shoots out the back and normally you have some kind of a bin or bucket. That can get filled up really quickly when you're doing four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen multicolor prints. So it's something I highly recommend either having a huge setup for that or just make sure you're checking it periodically and emptying it out so that way it doesn't overflow and build up inside of the printer because that can be problematic. Roughly 22 hours later, I was greeted with my finished Santa prints and was beyond excited to remove the supports and run out to show Aaron, like a kid quite literally on Christmas. I don't know how I missed it when doing the painting and the slicer or when I first looked at them, but the front of his bag, I forgot to paint gold like the back of it. That was 100% my fault and I think the excitement of getting this print fired off and the 20 minutes of me zoomed in cropping and panning around the Santa Claus. I just, just, everything started to look the same and I just happened to miss it. Regardless, the model turned out awesome. This Polymaker filament looks beautiful and the AMS and the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, it's what that was printed on, did a fantastic job. The hub, which goes for $49, works very similar to the buffer unit, except that it allows for up to four AMS units to attach to it and then it has one tube going out of it. In the box for the hub, you get, of course, the hub itself with two mounting screws, a long Bowden tube that can be chopped down for your AMS units if needed, and four connection cables that are the exact same style as what comes with the AMS, but longer. Installation of the hub is near identical to the filament buffer. Since I had already installed the buffer, I needed to disconnect the Bowden tubes and two cables, then unscrew the two screws that were holding it in place. To connect the hub, you'll need to use the two included screws to bolt it to the back of the printer, connect one cable from the hub to the printer, and the other will connect from the hub to the AMS. Bamboo recommends that this be the AMS that you use the most or your primary AMS. You also need to connect one Bowden tube from the hub to the printer and one from the AMS to the hub. Once you have the hub installed and the first AMS hooked up, you'll want to power on the printer. After the printer powers on, you can connect the rest of your AMS units. To do this, you just need to daisy chain them to each other. Their Bowden outlets will need to go into one of the inlets on the hub and their cable will plug into the previous AMS you connected. 
From what I can tell, it doesn't matter which connection on the AMS hub that you plug your AMS units into. And as far as IDing goes, the one that is connected directly to the printer will be AMS one, and then two will be the one plugged into this one, and three will be the one plugged into that one, and so on and so forth through the fourth one. There's really nothing else special that needs to be done. I configured all of them from the printer just like I did for the four, but this time for the eight since I had eight spools. And then in the slicer, if you click sync the AMS, it will now pull all of your AMSs. So in my case, there was now eight different colors or eight different materials that it pulled from the two AMS units and the hub into Bamboo Studio. Photosmint recently released a floral dragon model for his Patreon that I thought would be fun to try to print with eight colors. I may love torturing myself because there was so much detail in this dragon that it took me a ridiculous amount of time. I didn't time myself. I don't wanna know how long I spent just zooming in and painting little flowers, but the end result looks awesome. The AMS and the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon did a fantastic job. And I think all in all, this was probably a 48 to 50 hour print. So a very, very long one, again, with a ton of time going into all the color changes with there being so many little flowers and eight different filaments it had to cycle through. From a practical standpoint, I see the AMS being awesome for a print farm scenario where maybe you sell some products and you offer them in a couple of different materials or a couple of different colors. If you have four of them per printer or eight of them or 16 of them, but let's just say you have four of them and you you know offer something in like a black and white PTG or a black and gray PLA, you can have each of them loaded up inside of your AMS connected to your printer. And then when an order comes in, you send them off from the printer with you know sliced for whichever spool you want it printed in. And you don't have to have someone actually manually load and unload each time. And it might seem like a small thing, but if you're scaling your operation, that can really save a lot of time over time. I had mentioned to Bamboo many months ago that one thing I would love to see is that if you have two of these same types of filament or two similar types of filament to have an option where you're printing something, it runs out of filament, cool. It just starts on the next one. So you can load, again, two black PLAs, you're printing out a part, one runs out, it just grabs the next one. Currently, it pauses, which works fine, and then you just go and basically load in a new spool, but I would really love to see that implemented. I think with all the things that it does, it should be a fairly simple implementation, and I, I just feel like it will help, again, with sort of that farm automation. And that has been the Bamboo Labs AMS and the AMS Hub. If you are picking up a Bamboo Labs 3D printer and you did not get an AMS, I can tell you right now that it greatly enhances the overall experience and capabilities of these printers. Hopefully I was able to answer the majority of your questions and even if you are somewhat familiar with this, maybe I was able to teach you a thing or two. If you have any additional questions that I was not able to answer in this video, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get the answer for you. We are getting crazy close to 100,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.